Okay, let's talk about variables and mathematics. Of course, we are going to be talking about algebra, but this applies to all levels of math. So here we have some lovely variables, A, X, uh, Y, and C, uh, for example. But the question here, the topic of this video, is are variables always letters in algebra, in mathematics? Because that's all we see, right? We see X and Y, you know, A plus B, all that kind of stuff. But can we use other things uh, to represent uh, numbers? Well, I'm going to go ahead and give you the short answer. Uh, yes, you can. Okay, but uh, do we commonly use letters? Yes, we do. And I'm going to talk about uh, variables and their representations and what you will expect to see as you continue to learn more advanced mathematics and uh, science. So we're going to get to uh, this little topic here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything uh, in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you excel in your respective math courses. If you're going to be taking any test that has math on it, so I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, AccuPlacer, Alex exam, G, uh, the GMAT, the GRE, uh, CLEP exam, uh, maybe a teacher certification exam, you kind of get the idea. Any exam that has math on it, I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely want to check out my homeschool uh, math program. And if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. You can use mine. I'm going to leave uh, links to my math notes uh, in the description of this video as well. But you do need to kind of panic if you're not going to start taking notes, all right? You have to take great math notes to be great in math. That's the bottom line. So if your notes are less than like stellar, uh, start working on your notes and you're going to see your grade uh, improve. Uh, as your notes improve, your grade is going to improve, uh, improve as well. So believe me, this is a very, very under, an underappreciated thing in terms of being a math student, how important it is for you to have detailed, great math notes. But let's get into uh, variables. So what do you think? Uh, can you give me an example in algebra where we have a uh, variable or variables that are, aren't represented by a, a letter, okay? So can you think of anything, uh, a variable, that doesn't have a letter, but it is a variable, okay? So think about that for a second. And let's get into it. Put that into the comment section uh, if you have an example. But I have an example, and I'm going to take you back to, I don't know, the second grade, first grade. So how about this? How about uh, box plus 2 is equal to 5, okay? Uh, so here I have this little box, plus 2 is equal to 5. What is this? Okay, well, some of you might be saying, well, that's just a little box you put a number in. Well, not really, okay? This is a variable, okay? This is actually algebra. You, you didn't know this, but you were doing algebra algebra way back in the second grade. Uh, an equivalent um, uh, way to write this is x plus 2 is equal to 5. This is a fact in equ an equation, okay? So x and this box are representing the same thing. So first, let's just make sure you understand what a variable is in algebra. So what is a variable? Okay, put that definition in the comment section. But a variable is what? Okay, well, it's a placeholder for a number. It represents a number, any number that you want it to represent. Now, when you have a variable in an equation like this, the variable represents the number that makes this equation true. Okay, so here, as a young student, you'd be like, hmm, you know, you're thinking to yourself way back in, uh, again, second grade, and you're like, oh, I know the answer, I know the answer. It's going to be a three, and you'd be correct because your brain would be thinking to yourself, okay, what number do I need to plug in here to make this true? Okay, you play. if I plugged in at one, I would get one plus two, that's three. Nope, that's not five. How about if I plug in a two, two plus two, that's four. Uh, how about a three? Okay. Oh, three plus two, that's five. So three is the answer to this equation. Okay. Now, of course, you're not being told you're actually doing an equation, but this box here is in fact a variable. It represents a number. Okay. So this is an example of a variable that is not a letter. Okay. But in algebra, uh, you know, we do use letters pretty much all the time, right? So here, x plus 
2 is equal to 5, so we're going to solve this equation. We're going to subtract 2. From both sides of the equation, we get x is equal to 5 minus 2, which, of course, is 3, Okay, which is effectively doing this problem, but here I'm uh, solving an algebraic equation to figure out, oh, that 3 is, in fact, the right answer. All right, so uh, again, this is an example of you learning mathematics using a variable that is not a letter. Okay, but outside of this, Okay, do we have, let's talk about algebra. Is it common uh, to see uh, variables that are not letters? Well, most of the time you are going to be dealing with letters, okay? And you're going to be dealing with uh, things like X and Y. These are pretty, uh, very, very common uh, uh, letters. And, and they're going to be lowercase, right, as well. A, B, C. Now, this comes into play because you get to uh, select your variables when you're doing things like word problems and stuff like that. So oftentimes when you have a problem, you'll be able to kind of identify a variable or oftentimes you'll be given a problem like 2w plus 3w is equal to 6 minus w. So, you know, you'll be given um, equations with a variable, but if you have to select a variable for a particular problem, okay, it's 99% of the time is going to be a letter and even more so, it's going to be a lowercase letter. So I would say that most of the time, 90% uh, plus of the time, yes, in algebra, we're pretty much using lowercase, lowercase letters. But there's no rhyme or reason. There's not like uh, a, like an absolute rule that we can't use other variables as well. Okay, now why lowercase? Well, uh, it's just that you're not going to see things like, uh, let's just do this here, 3a minus b is equal to 7, and we have a plus 2b is equal to 6. So this is an example of a system of linear equations, something you would learn in Algebra 1, even in basic, uh, even in some pre-algebra courses. So... Again, we have lowercase variables. It wouldn't be appropriate to write 3a minus b is equal to 7 and a plus 2b is equal to 6. So if you like to write your letters as uppercase, well, this is, this is not good, okay? Uh, it's not exactly the end of the world either, but just so you know, by convention, that's kind of a fancy word. It just means uh, pretty much what everyone mostly does. You want to write these variables as lowercase letters, okay? You don't want to write them as uppercase. So if you like writing your, your uh, letters as uppercase, try to get in the habit of writing them in lowercase because uppercase... Um, Letters in algebra often represent other things, okay? So, like, for example, I could have, like, A here represent uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. So, here is a set of numbers. So, I want to name it. I can call this set A. So, lar uh, uppercase letters are kind of appropriate for things like this. You wouldn't call this set A like that, Okay. Uh, so again, these are kind of little unspoken type of rules and the way you're going to learn these rules, it just kind of follow what, how your teacher is presenting the information, how they're using, uh, variables. Okay. So again, are you going to be using letters most of the time? Most of the time I would say, yes, uh, you will be. So let's take a look at some of the formulas here. Here's a pretty, uh, famous formula E equals M C squared. Okay. I'll put another one over here. F is equal to MA, okay? So these are formulas. Of course, they have variables. So this is Einstein's theory of uh, relativity, probably the most uh, famous formula of all time. So E is energy, and then you have mass, and this is constant squared. This is the speed of light. So what you're, uh, you're here, this E is an uppercase, just to kind of, you know, say that, hey, this is a uh, formula that has to do with energy, okay? So again, it wouldn't be really, you're not gonna see this formula written like this, e equals mc squared. I've seen it written kind of like this, but that's not the way you would wanna you know, do it. You wanna write it like, like so, okay? So using letters and then knowing you know, when it's kind of better to have uppercase and lowercase, that's important as well. Remember, math is a language and variables are part of, you know, uh, the, the the letters and, and words that make up the language of math. So let's take a look at this uh, the formula. 
So this is more than just a simple equation. This is a formula for force. This is a physics formula. So this is force is equal to mass times acceleration. Again, we have this uh, the F kind of capitalized. But there are different type of um, uh, variables out there. You'll see different symbols in science and math. Here's one right here. It's a triangle. Okay, this stands for uh, delta. Okay, so if I say the delta P or delta T, okay, these are things that have to do with science, but they also have mathematical meaning, all right? And whether this could be a uh, variable or not, it's a representation of a concept. So you'll have things that are, that are outside of letters, uh, but this is delta, that means the difference, okay? So uh, this delta T is your difference in temperature, okay? So what's the, here's your little house, Okay, outside it's 100 degrees, inside it's 80 degrees. So what's the delta T? Well, that would be 20 degrees, okay? So again, uh, science, uh, the language of science is mathematics. So you gotta know, you know, what is a variable, what's a symbol that represents a function and things like that. But you do have other variables, especially when you move into things like calculus, um, you know, like epsilon, uh, backwards E, things like that, these, you start, you know, as you progress in mathematics, you start getting into um, other type of variables, uh, especially in trigonometry. You get into things that represent angles like theta, okay? So, you know, as you progress, you know, we're talking about algebra, but beyond algebra, you start using other symbols that do represent uh, numbers. And oftentimes, uh, we like to use the Greek alphabet, okay? So anyways, the whole idea is to remember that, you know, uh, a variable, okay, is a representation of a number, okay? When you're in basic algebra, yes, it's going to be very common to use lowercase letters, and then you'll start seeing uppercase letters as well, and you want to kind of uh, get the, a feel for when uppercase is used, lowercase is used, and don't go, don't, when you write your own problems, write the way the teacher is uh, showing you how to do it, or maybe the, how the textbook represents information, okay? Don't, don't write it differently, because this can cause confusion uh, for you in the future, but just remember, you know, way back in the good old days, you using uh, variables that were not letters, so uh, the bottom line is this, do a, uh, does Variables always have to be lettered? No, they don't. Are they mostly letters? Yes, they are, okay? Especially in algebra. But as you progress into more advanced mathematics, you'll, you'll have these plus other things as well. Epsilon, uh, here, I'll just leave you with a couple goodies. Uh, epsilon, uh, theta, these are very, very common. And then there's all sorts of other type of crazy symbols that uh, you can use to represent uh, concepts, uh, mathematical variables that get very, very, you know, uh, interesting. But again, a lot of these are going to be from the Greek alphabet. All right. So hopefully you found this video a little bit interesting. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. I'll find that tremendously uh, interesting. If you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. So my goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, uh, please take advantage of all the material that I have made. You know, a thousand videos, uh, I think it's up to 1,300 videos now at the time of this video. It's a lot of uh, work, but I love the work I do. I love to teach math, so I'm always teaching math. Again, I'm trying to spread it around from basic arithmetic to calculus, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.